Welcome to Feedback Fridays. My name is Carrie Brummer, and here on Artist Strong, I help artists like you build your skill and develop your unique artist voice. Each week, I'm here to offer you personalized support for your art. Today, we're going to look at work by lovely community members, Carmen and Angela. And if you're ready for some art feedback, comment below, ready. So that being said, let's get to the demonstration. So I'm going to switch my screen around so that you can see the stuff I'm uh, talking about in the demo here. Let me just close that out. So the first work I want to show you is a work in progress by Carmen. Um, I'm going to hide my screen for a minute so I won't see comments until um, I'm done with this tutorial, just so you guys know. So she was concerned this is a work in progress and she was doing it from her imagination. She wasn't using a photo reference and she's concerned about the proportions of the face. So let me get my, my little tools over here easier for me to use and work and let's make sure, yeah, it's big enough, okay? So she was concerned about the proportion and she hadn't been working from a photo reference. And first off, I wanna say this is a great way to make work that has your own unique style and voice. Um, I think it's a great idea to start with portraits without having a photo reference. Um, that being said, once you're in a spot where you feel like your proportions aren't right or something's lo looking funny, well then this means you could look to a photo reference to help you find and correct those things that you feel like aren't working quite, quite right. So I went to pexels.com, which is a free um, kind of uh, website space where you can get royalty free images and I found this image of a woman who's in a similar angle of her face except she's angled kind of her angle is um, you can see here like when we compare they're an opposite um, the head isn't quite in the right spot but in terms of the three-quarter angle it's accurate so I'm actually going to use this image and adjust it a bit so I'm going to actually transform it and change the angle to try to match Carmen's image so that then we can start working with this image to help us figure out what Carmen can do to work on her image to make sure that we're accurate in placement of features. And it doesn't matter um, you know, what, what image you use as long as the person has a similar angle. So what I've done is I'm gonna copy and paste this image on top of Carmen's. I'm gonna shrink it. And that way we can kind of line up the image of the face and see for ourselves if we think something's not quite right or it's not working the way it should. So once this gets smaller, we'll be able to compare. Oops, that's a little too much. I'm going to impact the opacity of the image so that I can see the face of the girl, but I can also see Carmen's work. And then I'm gonna just enlarge this image as best I can to see if I can fit it over the face a little bit and see if it gives us some insight. Okay, so let's match chins down here. Okay, and I think we need to make this one still a little bit bigger. It's getting, it's big enough that it's hard to, it's hard to adjust it completely accurately without distorting the face. Yeah, I think a little bigger still, but maybe not much. So this could be a trick that you use with some kind of tool like a Photoshop, just to help you see kind of how you're placing your features and whether you feel they're accurate. So I'm going to hide her for a minute and we're going to look at Carmen's painting in progress and then we'll kind of put the face up and we'll, we'll hide it again. Um, and in fact, I think I'll change the opacity to go down a little bit lower um, so you can kind of see a transformation there. So something I notice, um, if we look at the girl's face and the angle, look at, look at Carmen's forehead for the woman. Do you see on the, on the top right there? And do you see how the girl's forehead is angled in this image? So one thing that Carmen should look at is bringing in the angle of the image to move in this direction. I'm going to actually do that on this, right? So, 
So the angle of the forehead here is a little funny um, and that's coming, it's coming out kind of this way when instead it needs to be kind of moving um, diagonally left. So that'll be something she can look at to help adjust the likeness of this face. She's also picked like the hardest um, perspective and angle to take in a portrait. Um, so let's commend her for that as well. Um, you can tell features like the nose and mouth actually look relatively accurate. Um, in this case, this figure's lips are very big, but again, that could be because of the figure she's making. Um, when you look at the girl's mouth, um, her lips are kind of only in this area, and this is all chin underneath. So that's something Carmen could look at. And again, these are conscious artistic decisions that Carmen can now make using a photo just to help her figure out, are my features all placed the way I want them to be? Is there something missing? And you can do that. You don't have to make it transparent to look. You could just look at a photo reference right next to it. You know, notice, for example, in this image, how the girl's mouth kind of comes to an edge here. Well, then that's something that Carmen was working on here, but I almost feel like we, we still see a little bit too much of the mouth over here. It's, um, it's not rounded out and kind of going around in a curve the way this one is, right? Because the face is, is sideways, right? You've got kind of the, you've got a plane. If you were gonna make a square, right? The square would actually kind of be a diagonal. It would look almost a little bit more like a, like a diamond because of the angle her face is moving in, right? the plane of her face isn't straight on, right? It's not perfectly square when we look at it. So I'm gonna pop here and just see if you have any questions so far. Hi, Ellen, um, glad you're finding this helpful. Um, it's hard again to see your comments, so I'll keep an eye out for those. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, so that's something that I would suggest that she look at. The other thing that I notice is I think that this space is too large, and that's not because the young woman that we're looking at in this other photo has a lot of her face hiding. If you would look at this head, um, you'd see it kind of finishes in here, and her ears probably in here, right? So, so we need to look at that. Is the distance, what's the distance from her eye to her ear? And is that too long? I have, a, I have a hunch that it is. And that's something you could even look at in the mirror. You could take a selfie photo or you could look at yourself in the mirror while you're looking at your painting and try to measure the distance that you observe and how many eye lengths is it between the edge of that eye and that ear. That could be a really helpful way for Carmen to kind of revise and look at what she's doing and see if she's pleased with what's going on there. So I'm going to bring um, her opacity a little higher again so we can kind of compare. Um, I would say the eyes are looking relatively well placed. Um, the, the right one is definitely placed well. This one seems like it maybe I keep drawing on the wrong one. Um, this one seems like it maybe comes a little too far this way and it's a little too open. Um, but um, that's something she can play with as well. So look, do you see? So if we look at the placement of the girl's eyes in relation to each other because of the angle, her eyes are here and here, right? So that would be something for us to look at on this image. So let me try to draw it on there and see, see if we can see what we see. So I'm gonna fill it in on that side and just see what, what happens. And when you delete it so we can see the eye is well placed here and you have the start of the eye in the right place, but it might just go a little too far. It's kind of like this whole side of the face has just been a little too extended. And I think once Carmen has that down, she's really gonna feel more confident in her features. Um, because this is a work in progress, things like this shadow being really dark, the shadow kind of um, under her nose, here. It looks really dark right now, but as she layers colors on top, that probably won't look as dark. And it's important to note that she was really smart to have the kind of highlighted areas already above um, the lips on either side. Um, I think all that looks good. You can also look at things like angles, right? So say you're not worried about exact placement of features, but you just want to make sure that for your three-quarter angle that your, your face is kind of lined up right. Well, let's see. Those you know, that's the kind of angle I should have. When I lay out my pencil on the surface, I should match those same angles on both images because it's the same perspective taken. One other thing that doing this just made me note is note how her nose goes almost straight up and down. 
um, that means that the bridge of her nose is very tall. So like here is actually very tall on the image in the painting. So because it's a three quarter angle, your nose would likely have that kind of angle as well. So I hope this gives Carmen some food for thought. Um, there will be replay access, so that can help as well. Ellen, no worries, there will be a replay, so I'm happy to have you here and watch the replay when you can. So that's some of the initial feedback that Carmen was asking for on a face, and that's something I want you all to be thinking about is, if you're really looking to find your unique voice, then why not try to draw from your imagination and then use photo references to help you place your features, then you're creating a unique human and you don't have to worry about your image being royalty free that you draw from or anything like that because you've drawn this person from your imagination and you're just using the image reference to help you figure out whether you've placed all your features accurately. That can be a great strategy and you saw we were looking at angles with the face, we're looking at the forehead and how, how the eyes fit. Remember that we're creating the illusion of a three-dimensional object in that this object is kind of like an egg shape. So we need to make sure that the features fit along the surface of that egg and, and make sure that we're keeping that in mind. So Carmen, I really look forward to seeing where this painting goes. I always enjoy your work. And I'm so glad you have another work that you offered to share with us as well. So here is her other piece. So I'm gonna close out this portrait since we kind of talked about everything we needed to there. Um, and I am gonna put this work in progress up. So this is new for her. She told me she's working with tissue and this is also not quite finished is what I remember her saying. And so I wanna talk about what I see in this so far. First, I love the composition. I think the composition is really strong. Um, it's really nice that she has kind of things going off the edge of all the surfaces because you've got flowers kind of coming up here and you've got arms kind of coming off both sides there. So that creates some really nice balance because it's not like there's only one side where everything goes off the edge and that's a really good compositional decision. The other thing that I really like is her use of color and this feeling of lighting. Like there's a sense of light kind of coming in this direction on the figure and all of the light on the clothes and um, a little bit on the face that's suggested right now has that feeling as well. The texture and the colors are gorgeous. So a couple things I do when there's a work in progress that I'm not quite sure, is it finished? What else do I wanna do? Um, I immediately want more of these colors hinted just a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a hint here and here in the clothes. And I think that's a really great way to bring harmony and balance to an artwork as well as hinting through those colors, hinting those colors throughout the work. But I almost wish there was a little bit, I don't know if I need it in the background or it needs to be a little stronger up here, but these colors are so strong and rich that it kind of keeps my eyes going down. And I wanna make sure that there's some of that color to help us bring it up to her face a bit more. So um, I don't know, even like what if there was like a flower necklace that she was wearing that was kind of small but there that was made of these rich colors um, or a collage element from them or tissue I think that could really help bring us up to the woman's face and hair um, and I think that would be a really interesting way to try to bring that color around. Uh, something I want to note here as well, guys, is just because I'm giving feedback doesn't mean I'm like artist guru here. You know, I have ideas because of my background in education and helping other people find their voice in the arts. I have different ideas to share, but part of this exercise and doing Feedback Fridays is getting your art in front of many people who might also have really useful ideas. So do remember that when we offer feedback to each other. It's about giving information that helps an artist make a good decision about their art. It's not saying something's good or bad. It's not about judging it. It's about offering them information so that they can end up making a choice for themselves in their art. So if you have some other ideas, um, just like the one I mentioned with the flower necklace, then please comment in the comments below and give Carmen some ideas as well. It's really helpful for all of us because as we start to engage in these conversations, we're gonna up-level all of our art. And, and even looking at examples of feedback that other people give artwork that's not your own can really help you better understand your own art. Uh, the one other thing I wanna do with Carmen's work is I wanna take a quick look at it in black and white just to see what it looks like. I think that can be super helpful. And here I 
I think that this looks quite lovely. I think there's a really nice balance of light and dark. So, so honestly, for me, that's the only thing I really noticed. And, and then I'm kind of interested in a more refined face. I'd love to see a little bit more detail of the features of the face. Um, and again, I think that has more to do with my own taste and style than it necessarily does with the kind of work Carmen's making here. So that's something Carmen can think about too. If you're going to keep the face a little more kind of uh, relaxed and loose marks, then just for me, then give her a mouth maybe? I don't know. I'm curious to hear what other viewers have to say about that as well. So Carmen, thank you again for being brave and being the first person in our first new round of Feedback Fridays to go on air and let me talk about your art. We have one more person today and I am really excited to share her work. But before I do, I wanna ask, so far, how can you apply the information that I've shared in, in today's tutorials and feedback um, to your own art? If you can think of a concrete way that you can apply it and you understand how to use this info in your art, then please comment yes below. It doesn't matter if you're watching this live or the replay, I'm gonna continue this conversation with you. So please, let's have that go. Let's, let's have those comments and move forward. And if you're not sure yet and you'd like to better understand how you might apply this to the work that you do, then please ask those questions in the comments and I'll be sure to follow up with you. I'd love to hear some actionable takeaways from you all about how you're gonna use this information to help your art. So that being said, um, moving kind of away from more realistic work or figural work, we're gonna look at um, an abstract work by Angela. So let me get it out. She had a specific question. So I wanna get the question out and then I have the image ready so that we can draw on it a bit. So let's get to her screenshot first with her question. So here's her work. She said, this is a piece I've been working on. I started intuitively, and now I have an idea to put some symbols over the silver area at the bottom. Other than that, I'm not sure what looks out of balance or what I could do to make it better. Please let me know. So Angela, great questions. Um, there's so much about this work I already enjoy, and I'm sure that you guys will feel similarly. So let's get this larger so we don't get lost in the, the endless Facebook screen from me sharing my video here. Here we go. Um, first thing, I love, I am so drawn to this whole area in the work. Something about these little like circles and dots and pebbly like features and then having it next to these kind of washes and transparent layers. I think that's really, really beautifully done. Um, personally, I, I hope that Angela doesn't touch a single thing in this top half of this, this top third of the work maybe. Um, I absolutely love it. And because of that, that leads me to want not necessarily the same quantity, but I, and I can see kind of some bits that suggest maybe similar shapes below, but I would love to see this hinted throughout the space instead of feeling maybe like it's a little divided. Um, and, and again, I do think I see hints of some of them layered, and I think that's a really good idea. But for me, I want, you know, it could be a different kind of color. It could be a different, um, kind of masking color. So it looks like she had all these bright colors underneath and then she painted perhaps like a dark blue on top of it to create these shapes. I could see a similar approach for areas throughout the rest of the piece, but with a different concentration of them and different kinds of colors. Um, for me, there's a transition that's quite nice in here where I feel like all three sections work well together. Um, I'm kind of curious about seeing more transition between these two sections a little bit, and I'm not sure how. So I'm really curious. I'd love to hear what you guys think about transitioning that area a bit. Um, it kind of feels like it cuts the artwork into a third and it's like divided from the rest for me because it's kind of a strong yellow all the way across. So I wonder if something like this lovely blue kind of coming down and across and over somewhere, if that would help kind of make it feel a little more unified to me. Um, I think that that is impacting balance is having kind of this almost dividing line. Um, I love the color though. I think that they're rich and bright and I like the contrast of like the yellow to the white. And there's something quite nice about this movement that I like or, or possibly silver, depending on what she was, what Angela said. I'm not sure with the lighting there, that could be a reflective silver. So not sure about what to do in the bottom. 
there is a lot of me that would just love to see a similar approach from all of this above below underneath this kind of white earthy silvery root like kind of texture um, but there are lots of things you can do with abstract art and there's not a single right answer so if if that's not resonating with you, Angela, think about what else you like in this work, what what part you think is really successful and think about, um, am I incorporating that kind of texture style or marking throughout the piece to help create balance? Because that is one way to create balance is to make sure that you use similar colors throughout the work, that if you have kind of patterns or textural marks that you're very cautious or you're mindful about where you place them and how. And that includes strong colors. Strong colors draw your eye to a place and keep your eye there. So what else do you have around the strong color that you might be using, like your yellow, for example, to help people's eyes move through the piece? And those are choices you can make that can help kind of round out the painting. I'm actually quite curious with this one to change it to black and white and see what we see. Um, so for me, um, an immediate thing I notice with this is how, how there's not a lot of strong white or highlights in the piece. One, I'm really happy to say that that's a good thing in some ways because a lot of people are afraid to go dark. But now I'd really love to see some like lovely rich highlighted areas kind of peek through even more top and bottom of the piece. And, and that could also help create some balance. It might be nice to see some of these even like brighter kind of lighter colors now we're in black and white right now but remember every color has has its own tonal value um, which means kind of the shading that it provides when you do turn it to black and white and if you don't have an app on your phone that lets you turn your photos of your art from black to white you can squint your eyes at your artwork and that will help you see those lights and darks as well I think this work has so much wonderful energy. It feels very unique. I've not actually seen anything quite like it before. And I like that, especially about abstract work. Um, it's, it's refreshing to see that you're using strategies that I've seen other artists use, but you're, you're using them in a way that I think is unique to you, Angela, and that's pretty special. So thank you so much for sharing this work with us. I'm uh, quite curious to see where you go with it. And I hope that you'll continue to share the work. Um, if any of you share work, and get feedback on the work during one of these Feedback Fridays and you wanna follow up and share with us the finished work, I think that would be awesome. So feel free to email them to me, carrie at artiststrong.com so that I can share it on a future show so that people can see kind of what you decided to do and where you went with the piece. There was one other thing I was hoping to share with you, Angela, about this work and it's totally just kind of disappeared from my mind. Oh, um, it doesn't hurt to flip your artwork around too and see if that helps give you a different view or idea. Um, I think that can be quite helpful with abstract works. I think you've already been doing that in this piece, but that could also help us kind of get some fresh perspective. When I do look at this work, I always kind of, it's like looking at clouds in the sky and I can imagine shapes and images and stories. And there's something for me about this kind of silvery white space that feels very earth related, like oh, like roots and earth and connection. And, and so I almost feel like this space underneath is like, like ocean or earth or, or kind of deeper into the earth. There's something for me that I'm relating to. And then this yellow feels almost like fire and landscape with some kind of aurora borealis sky on top. So I hope that just reading like that might also give you some ideas. And that's another way you all can offer feedback to people too, is just look at the painting and share the story that you imagine in the work. That can be so helpful for an artist when they're trying to make decisions about how to finish a work. If you too would benefit from this kind of activity that I offer on Feedback Friday, please email me your art or the question you have about your art or social media or your artist website, whatever you're looking for feedback on when it comes to your art, finding your voice, building your skill, I am here to help. So email me the images of your art or the links to your website that you'd like feedback on, or just email me a question or a problem you're having in your art to carry C-A-R-R-I-E at artiststrong.com. And on a future Feedback Friday, I will be sure to answer that question. 